Hi, good evening everybody. In this video, I'm going to give what I believe could be the potential starting lineup for next game. Let's take a look at it. Coming up. All right. And I was pleasantly surprised when I checked I did this and then I checked Cat Friendly after and I kind of do these little challenges with myself. I was very close, very close. A few things were different, but let's take a look at it. Now, before we get into this, I want to tell you how impressed I was with J.J. Paterka, Linus Weisbach, Brett Murray, and even Jack Quinn to some extent. Uh, especially Paterka, I, uh, I thought was going to cut the squad. But honestly, guys, I, I, like I said in my other video, I do believe it's, it's, it's very soon. He's going to be called up. They had to have the roster set. You know, so for some fans might take this the wrong way and think, oh my God, well, what does the guy have to do? I would just say he just has to wait a little while. It's not long. He's coming. I, I would say him going down there, and Granado nailed it on the head when he talked about the valuable time he will get down there. He'll get a lot more time down there than he would up here right now, which makes sense for his development. And again, part of this game, guys, is we got to be patient. As excited as we were about some of these guys, we got to be patient. We got to let management do what they got to do. Okay, shout out goes to Jake Hurto. See, Jake, I didn't forget the video. I just wanted to do it when, you know, pretty much we had the roster set. Wouldn't have made sense for me because this would have looked probably completely different. All right, so on our first line, okay, I got Skinner, Middlestat, Hinostroza. If you would have told me that a few months ago. I, when we first got this guy, I never would have believed it. But this is a real energy player, guys, really. I, I, when I compare him to Briere, I'm not joking, you know? I, like, he has that energy about him. Now, Skinner, if Skinner goes into a rut this year, no joke, we got to flip him over to the right side. We got to start doing something, all right? He played both wings when he was in Carolina. Because I know last time I'd put him on the right side, people saying he plays left. But guys, he's played both in his career. Okay, it, it, people think that you're so set on, look, look, look what I have in the middle now. I have Thompson. We, we don't have to worry if we experiment this year. I would say, if anything, if Skinner gets in a rut, we got to switch him over to the right side. We do. We got to start experimenting. Anything to make him have some sort of a breakout. It doesn't really matter. You know, he might be comfortable there this year. There's no way to know. So I would say with Skinner, if he starts slumping, Throw him on the right side, see what happens. We have nothing to lose. He has experience playing right wing as well. Okay, second line, Asplin. Energy, energy. You guys were right about him. Uh, Thompson, got to put him in the middle. I, I never would have believed I'd say Tage Thompson's our number two center. But guys, you've seen in, you've seen in camp how he looked. And Olofsson, which... Um, I think Olofsson is going to be pretty much second line most of the year. I don't think he'll be first line this year. Unless he really breaks out all of a sudden. We'll see. We'll see with Olofsson. But I think that's a very secure spot for him. He's not really a first line player. Is Hinnestroza? Probably not. But he impressed me more than Olofsson in camp. So. And these guys got some chemistry. You know, they got some chemistry together. So let's leave it. Uh, the third line, I got Bjork, Cousins, and Kajula, and Cap Friendly had them as the fourth line, but they, he, they did have them together. And our veteran line of Jurgensen's, Eakin, and uh, Poso, I got as our fourth line. Now, I'm not saying that these lines can't flip, okay? This is all easily, you know, left wing, right wing. Thompson, he can be, most likely Thompson's going to stay center. Yeah, no, I'm going to leave Thompson. No, he's going to stay center. Okay. I wouldn't have guessed this before the year, and 9 out of 10 of you would have, but I kind of didn't think it was going to. But I would say now, Darlene and Yoki Haru. I had it in my last video, yes. I had them together, but I was questioning it, you know. But now, I say we, we've got, it's time for them to take the forefront, take the reins of this team defensively. And we have to, sooner or later, trust these two together. So what better time than right now, right? And Bryson, I got on the second pairing with Miller. 
And you guys know that I probably would have had him scratched a few months ago because of his size mostly. But he impresses me. Uh, he, in, in, the pre, you know, in, the, um, in the camp, he impressed me. What time he got, I found he looked... Um, and it's not that he's just fast, guys, and he's offensive. It's not that. But he, he, he played pretty mistake-free. He wasn't making boneheaded mistakes out there. He seemed to be on top of the plays and stuff too, you know? He seemed bigger than his size, if I could say it that way. Let's leave it at that. So I got Bryson with Miller, because I do think Butcher and Hag are going to be together most of the year. I do. I can see them both being together. And then I got Anderson and Tarkarski, and I got Anderson starting in the first... I, I think Anderson will start the first game. The scratches, I have Hayden, Royal Salanen, and on defense, I got uh, Pizik. And nothing against any of those guys. I just think this is kind of what we're going to go with in the first game. I could be wrong, and these three could be in, and, uh, you know, Hag could be out, and there's no way to know. There really is no way to know. Or Butcher could be out, I should say. You know, I'd have Hag in and before Butcher, so. Um, Hayden, I would like to have his size in the lineup. But I think we're going to go in game one with as much speed as we can. I think this is going to be the strategy. And I think this lineup that you're looking at is going to change a lot during the year. So there was no, no right lineup. You know, we'll all have our own ideas, I guess, when it comes to something like this. Um, I could see these bottom six flipping within themselves. But I do like, believe it or not, Jurgensen, Zeke, and Akposo seem to have, uh, they seem to have an identity, you know? And I think that this line could flip up to the third. I know, uh, I know many people are going to say that could be the third line. It could be. It could be. I mean, look, we got Middlestad as our number one center, guys. This is where we're at. And nothing against Middlestad. I'm happy with Middlestad, but it's a lot of pressure for the young man, you know? coming into this and uh, having just to be the guy. He has to be the guy now. And Thompson, and I do think Cousins eventually will flip up to the second line and Thompson maybe a little lower. We'll see, we, we don't know yet. We really don't know. Depends on the chemistry with the lines. You know, the more the season unfolds, and I do want to say for the record, I am absolutely positive Paterka will be on this team by the end of the year as a regular, okay? Weissback, there's a chance. There's a chance. Brett Murray, I think, might make it back to the team before Weissback because of his size, mainly. Weissback, though, I like what I've seen, the energy of this guy. I could see these three, not Quinn. I could actually see these three making our squad by, by the end of the year. These could be big names, guys. When we're going down the stretch in a stretch run or something, if by some fluke, ungodly reason, the Sabres are in a playoff hunt, you don't know, right? We don't know. But if by some chances the dice roll this year and the Sabres are better than we think, and I think they will be anyway, but if we're that good, I could see these three being part of it. I think Quinn's going to uh, probably take another year. Um... Paterka really worked his tail off during COVID. And I think that was the difference with him and Quinn. I think Paterka put in more time, more effort, more games, more everything. And that's why Paterka almost cut this team. He really, he really, in my books, cut this team. He did cut this team. But we have to have a 23-man roster. We have no choice, you know. So that's what I got. That's my 14 forwards in in. You know, you might think we're out Selena and is probably going to play in the first game. I don't know. Maybe. Hayden, we might use his size. Depends who we're playing. I can guarantee this. If in the first game we're not playing these two or whatever two, I guarantee these two next game will probably get, some, probably get a game. I'm willing to bet that even these three will get in next game. Yeah. Uh, that's how I could see it playing out. So what do you think, guys? I know it's a little frustrating. Paterka didn't cut the team because it was exciting to have this kid, eh? This was exciting. You know, we, we've got some, you know, if anything we learned in camp, folks, is that we got some fun young players still up and coming that we don't even realize how good they might just be in a few years, you know? My God. You know? This isn't to mention Owen Power and 
There's even other names here that, that, that I haven't even got on the board that are up and coming, including other goalies, all our, all our young goaltenders, you know. Future's bright, folks. I really believe it. So this is our team, all right? This is my team. I mean, my, the team I picked, but I mean, it doesn't mean I'm right here. But I would ask you guys, what do you, who do you see? Who would you throw top center? I think middle stat's the safest because he's the guy I think that can handle the pressure the best because he's had the experience of coming up, feeling, going back down and coming up again. And I think that plays into him being number one. Uh, Thompson just, you know, I know the Ryan O'Reilly trade we got nailed, okay? But you know this, Tage Thompson's been a blessing. I, I, I was laughing at this guy a year ago and now I believe in him, you know, ever since, ever since, and you know, I got to give Kruger credit because Kruger seen something in him. He just didn't know how to coach him, <laughs> you know, but he's uh, uh, under Granado. He's a different hockey player. He is a different hockey player. The Blues fans are wrong saying this guy's a joke and he's a bust and they were wrong. I'll tell you right now, they were wrong. So we have some guys here that could break out. And I want to go on this thing about Skinner again. If he starts to slump and he got like one goal in 20 games, flip him to the right. Flip him to the right. See, Christ, do something. Don't just let him sit there and rot and put him down in the lineup. Flip him. He's played right wing. Flip him to right also. See what happens. We never know. Scotty Bowman used to do those things all the time, you might recall, guys. Come on. You know, we got to sometimes flip guys from... God, you remember Scotty had like Lindy Ruff playing defense and forward once upon a time. You got to let these guys find their way out, but not by punishing them, by, by experimenting with them, you know? So uh, that Skinner I'm concerned about going into the season. I am. I don't have this good feeling and I don't like it. But nothing against Skinner yet. Let's see how the season opens. He might go right off the handle. And I'm going to be like, all right, you know, like he's back. So this is what I got, guys. I'm going to leave it there. I wish you all a great night. And uh, I'll be in time. I know I'm behind my comments. I'll get to those as soon as I can. I've got to take my little girl out. She needs to go and find other dogs to bark at. It's a doggy dog world, folks. All right. I'll see you tomorrow, guys. Have a great one.